That's one good sign. And the funny thing about shame is shame and dishonor. Dishonor means that it's like you don't feel proud. You don't feel good. I don't want to say proud. You don't feel good about yourself. So why would they cover up something that was made perfect? He made their bodies perfect. And immediately after the pride door opened, now they're ashamed of how they look. Mm -mm -mm. That sounds like a pandemic that we're dealing with today. So many people don't like the way they look. each and every one of you here to Fuel Station Live. I am Pastor Nathan Salter. I am super excited to be here and able to connect with you on another powerful teaching. We are super excited because we have been on a powerful series entitled Pride, the Root to All Your Frustrations. And today we are going to be going into episode number four. Now, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to our channel, please do so. We would really appreciate it as you help us share this message. But I know that today's teaching is going to be a blessing to you. So today in this room, I have some amazing people. I wish you can see them. But um, if, if, if the camera showed you who they were, uh, the camera may break because of the anointing on their life. So I'm not going to show you their faces, but just know that I'm in a room with some amazing folks. All right. And we are here representing Buffalo, New York. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And the Buffalo Bills are going to the Super Bowl in the Jesus name. All right. So, so, <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, so listen, we are super excited. We are happy um, to be here. So we are going to go into episode number four today. And I am super excited. So I'm going to ask everybody here in the sanctuary and those who are watching online, you can view the scriptures on on the on the um, on the screen. But we're going to go and start with Proverbs chapter 11. So if you want to turn your Bibles there, this is where we're going to start off, because we have been talking in the last few weeks about how pride is the root to every frustration you're going through. And we started this series showing you how pride originated. We started showing you how it was the root to how he got Eve to mess up everything. And so we have showed also that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, uh, that is branches from the pride. And I, and I kind of showed you how when Eve saw the tree, the thing that made Eve take the fruit from the tree was the devil, the devil was smart enough to says, listen, you will be as gods. That thing opened up what we call the pride door. And when she opened that up, then all of a sudden the scripture says, and she saw that the tree was good, that it looked good. So immediately she began to see the beauty of the tree after he opened the, uh, the, opened the pride door. And that is very important because that is what the devil is trying to do to you. He is trying to hit you at the pride door because when he hit the pride door open, all of a sudden things that you've been looking at every day and you haven't been noticing, now all of a sudden those things will start looking good to you. Mm. So this is why pride is so important. So that's why we say it's the root to all your frustration, all your arguments, all the behavior problems you're going through, they're all stemming off the pride. All right, so, and I, I, so right now, take a second and just think about what area of my life am I frustrated? And just look at every area that just seemed like it's giving you a lot of challenges. There is a pride tree, a pride door somewhere over there that is causing that thing to be all messed up. I guarantee it. So all through scripture, you're going to see that this thing called pride is messing people up. You saw it in Eve. You saw it with all the kings. You saw it with the, when the prophets failed. You saw it when the God's servants failed. You saw it when the disciples got their foot in their mouth. Every time you saw people falling, <laughs> pride was somewhere dancing. <laughs> so pride is the root. It is the thing. And this is the thing, because remember, the scripture says God resisted the proud. That's our theme scripture, James chapter four. He resisteth the proud and he give grace to the humble. So the humble people is the ones that's go feel God. All right. He gives grace to the humble. So he resists the proud. So think about this, guys, before we go into Proverbs. If he resists the proud. Imagine if the worship leaders who are leading worship at our churches is proud. They're singing about a God who is not accepting their worship because of their pride. Imagine if the pastors who are preaching is full of pride. 
They're preaching his word and he's still resisting them because they got pride. So if pride is in the way there is going to be resistance from God, even if you're doing a good thing. And that is the scary part. So I always I share it with you, I think, on week one, how on the first week you had King Saul who, who made an act of disobedience. And then you had King David who committed adultery, killed her husband. And God keeps David and get rid of Saul. And to me, I'm like, wait a minute. David did a little bit more. <laughs> yes. And the thing was, David was humble enough to say it against thee and thee only have I sinned. So he went back to the humble tree. Saul said, Samuel, can you restore me in front of the people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did less of a sinful deed, but pride was still in his heart. And God said, you cannot represent me as king because of this thing. This thing is so serious that if people don't, I, I, I am so, I, when I'm in alone with the Holy Spirit, I kid you not. Every time I hear the Holy Spirit, he always tells me, he's like, I am not going to move until we deal with pride. We can pray all we want. Revival, Lord, send your fire. God is like, the only fire I'm going to send is to burn the pride in your heart. Because we are, we, and, and let me just show you again what pride looks like. Pride always says, I want to be more than what God made me to be. So look at Eve. She was already created in the image of God. And the devil says, you shall be as God's. He made her believe that she could be more than what God made her be. And she took it because of that. And I think I showed y'all last week, you know, you got people now, you know, starting things, doing things because somebody else said, you know, what? you need to be a bishop. You need to be an apostle. You need to be. Yes, and people sir. are doing that and they're not called by God to do it. Yes, sir. So what's happened is they're they're operating, doing a good work, but resisted. Because the motive, God looks at our motive. So this is one of the things that I said to myself, I don't want pride to work in my life. And I used to, and I did admit I used to be very prideful back in the day. I was prideful when I dated back in the day. I was prideful when um, I, about everything. And, and every time I was prideful, God was like, go ahead, do what you got to do. And after I bumped my after I had 20 bumps on, the for, on my forehead, <laughs> then I come to prayer. Lord, Jesus, help me, Lord. Lord Jesus, help me, Jesus, I help me. And he like, okay, I love you so much. Since you're humble enough to say, help me, I'll help you. However, yeah. <laughs> and every, so every frustration, pride is at the root. So now let's talk about opening the pride door because I was saying today we're going to talk about the things that's behind the pride door. So when the pride door is open, the first thing that's going to come out is shame. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about shame for a minute. All right. So let me read uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 11. And I want you to see this because it is very, very clear in Proverbs chapter 11, verse two. So if you have your Bibles, please read this along with me. It says this. Verse two says, when pride cometh, look at this, y'all, then cometh disgrace. And King James says shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So he says, when pride shows his head, Look out. Shame is about to pop his head up, too. So you see a lot of people who's who's walking in shame in their life. And, they, well, you know, I'm ashamed of this. I'm ashamed of this. Well, it's because you've been doing some things apart from God's approval. You've been doing some things in your own strength. And now you're at this place where shame is picking his head up. So behind door number pride is a door number pride behind the door. Of pride is shame. Now go with me to Genesis chapter three. Let me show you this, because now we're about to see how it showed up in the first family in Genesis. So we have Genesis chapter three. We see that this is after they were tested, uh, after they were tempted and, and they did eat. Let's go to verse, um, I'm gonna read verse six. It says in Genesis three and six, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, remember she'd been seeing this tree for a long time, but she couldn't notice it when the pride door was closed. But the moment the pride door was open, verse six says, and when she saw that it was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes <laughs> and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Now look at verse seven. And the eyes of them both were open 
and they knew, uh oh, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So in verse 7, they began to try to cover up their nakedness. Shame. shame. So the moment, one way you know that you're dealing with shame is you're always hiding, trying to cover up. You, you start to try to withdraw from God as opposed to go close to God. That's one good sign. And the funny thing about shame is shame and dishonor. Dishonor means that it's like you don't feel proud. You don't feel good. I don't want to say proud. You don't feel good about yourself. So why would they cover up something that was made perfect? He made their bodies perfect. And immediately after the pride door opened, now they're ashamed of how they look. Mm -mm -mm. That's not like a pandemic that we're dealing with today. So many people don't like the way they look. They just, I'm ashamed of my face. I'm going to get me a two noses. <laughs> I'm going to stitch me a new ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a scripture in Psalms 139 that says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. But when shame hit, you start looking at something on your body and you're like, oh, I don't like this. Well, the reason why you don't like it is because, first of all, you're pretty much telling your creator you did not do a good job, which is a form of pride. Because now you're telling your creator you don't know what you're doing. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. You see how pride is so sneaky that every decision is now being based on pride because when you don't like yourself, now you're going to try to do things to get approval. Who are you trying to get approval from? Those are the people you need to be looking at. Why am I trying to oppress these people? I tell people this all the time. Would you make this next decision if everybody was blind? If nobody can see what you are about to do with your, your hair, your nose, whatever, would you still make that decision? If nobody would say, oh, that's a nice do. That's a nice haircut. Would you get your haircut if nobody can see your haircut? You see how we're every so now we have completely taken our focus off of trying to please him and honor him. Now we're so busy of I want to make sure I fit in. I want to look like this because this is what everybody approved because that's coming from a place of shame. So when the shame comes forth, now people are uh, doing so many things to their body. They're doing so many things because they don't like the way God made them. So now this is the, uh, the ne next thing. Now, this is the, this is this is where it gets good. So go now to Proverbs chapter. Let's go to Proverbs 13. This one is go. This one is uh, kind of hit home a bit, but I think everybody will get it. So we're, again, we're talking about shame. Shame is the first thing that pops his head up when that pride door is unlocked. So here we see in, in Proverbs chapter 13. Let's look at verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. So poverty and shame shall be to him who don't know how to listen. Yes. I hope y'all underline that. So the person who don't like to hear God says, don't go left. I'm going left because I just feel I know I'm going and you go left and all hell break loose. And then all of a sudden God says poverty and shame is with that person. Now they're shameful because they made a foolish decision because they did not do what Proverbs 3 said. In all thy ways, if I would have just acknowledged him, he would have direct my path on this. But because I didn't listen to him and I just did what I felt like doing and I wasn't listening to instructions. Uh, my friend told me that God used my friend to say, listen, don't do it. Don't 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 date that young lady. She crazy. Uh, but no, no, no. I got to date her. And now you call the pastor. Pastor, uh, can you send one of the deacons? Um, this this lady I was dating had a knife up in my throat. Um, I can't talk loud because she may just stick it a little harder up my throat. <laughs> so can you send the deacon? <laughs> and the and the person that everybody was saying, stay away from this one, sitting right there with that knife up in your throat. Yeah. That used to be me back in the day. I wouldn't listen. People would say things like, don't don't do this, don't. Mm -mm. Be, be, be careful. And I'm like, they just saying that. They just don't want 
Me to, they just trying to hold, hold me back. Y'all, y'all know, they just trying to hold me back. Y'all, I know y'all heard that before. They just trying to hold me back. And yeah, they hold you back from destruction. <laughs> That's what they try to do. <laughs> but prideful people say, I don't care. I'm too prideful. I don't. God says, OK, because of your pride, I'm going to resist you. Go ahead. Get your heart broken. And then I will be here with so much love waiting for you to come back. <laughs> That's the thing I do love about God. That he already know that we got prideful tendencies and he has already made a way to just say he's just like just cast your cares upon me because I know you are about to trip. So listen, after you trip, all I ask you to do is be humbled enough to admit it and come back to me. Don't be stupid and trip and then go tell Shaquiqui. Shaquiqui can't help you. <laughs> she don't have the grace to give you. I have it, though. So come to me. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So every time, that's why God loved David so much, because Charlene over there, y'all see her? She is, she is acting. <laughs> so you see how our pride, I, I'm a, okay, I'm going to show you how bad pride is. Lord have mercy. One time, one time I was, uh, I needed some help with something. I was, I was working on something and I told somebody uh, some while back, oh, I got this. I can fix this. I can fix this. Come to find out, I, come to find out, I didn't know what I was doing, uh, Jerome. I didn't know what I was doing. And I got myself in a situation, not situation, situation, Charlotte, <laughs> that I, in the middle of the process of taking screws off, Pastor, taking screws off the thing, and now it, I don't even know what screw go where. <laughs> You, you just start, you, you know something wrong when you got like all these different size screws and you're like, so I'm at that stage wow. <laughs> and I, the person who I was next to was saying, listen, I can't help you. And I was like, no, 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 I got this. I got this. And do you know that the thing started to fall on me? And everything in me said, ask the person to help. And do you know it took me 15 minutes to try, I did everything I can to try to act like I can do it without them. Mm. And it got to the place where when I started feeling so dishonored and shame, when the pieces started falling and I started feeling shame, that's when I got humbled. Mm. But you see how long it took me? Why can't I just say in the beginning, I don't know what I'm doing. Wow. Yeah, it's like I should have just said, I don't know what I'm doing. And if I would have did that, the humble will then get grace. Yeah. And the proud is up there frustrated. Yeah. That's why I said it's the root of frustration, because you're trying to do something apart from the help. And the Holy Spirit is your helper. Yes. <laughs> and we get up, we, and I tell people, I say, we get up and we don't pray. We, just, we don't read our scripture. We just walk up. We wake up in the morning, and look at our clock. And, oh, man, I got to go to work. And we go to work without even talking to our helper. That's called, I don't need you. I can do this apart from you. That's really what we're saying. I know we don't say it, but your actions are saying, if you don't spend time with the Lord before you talk to, to your kids, your, your, your spouse, your, your, your neighbor, if you go and start talking to them, talking to everybody on social media, before you engage with the one who got your, your eternity in his hands, you pretty much saying you are important, but you're not. You're not that important to be first. I'll come to you if I need you. That's really what we say. And it's when the car almost run you off the road. That's when, oh, Jesus. And he's like, oh, oh, I'm in your schedule now. Even though it's two in the afternoon. <laughs> and you see, it, prideful people says, I can do this. And that's why prideful people, you will see them very shameful. Because they will keep bumping themselves in the head a lot. That's why this is one of the first things that come behind um, the door. When the doors open, you go see that. That's why you, we have to pray for our young people because our young people, they are walking with so much pride today. Yes. And this is why you're seeing young people going through so many different things. And I'm about to show you in scripture that what I'm saying is the truth. Please turn with me to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. A lot of people don't even notice in the scripture, but it's, it's in here. And you're going to and this is going to answer a lot of the a lot to why our young people are going through the way they are. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15 says this. 
The rod and reproof giveth wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth, bringeth his mother to shame. You know what that's saying? The child who don't have nobody to tell them and give them some instructions. Don't do this. Don't do this. Listen, that child is like I can run my own life. That child is going to bring so much shame. The Bible said it. I didn't say it. That's what you're seeing out here. So a lot of these kids are saying, I don't need to listen to my parents. I can do whatever I need to do. And many of you, I know you guys are seeing it too. A lot of, they're just doing their own thing. And so the younger, the younger they are going out there, hanging out. I'm not listening to my mom. I'm not listening to my dad, whatever. More shame is being brought upon these young people. That's why we got to really pray for our youth. We got to really pray for them because the devil understand that if I can open that pride door and these young people early, and he's doing it. So you got now young people now they're like, listen, the parents is like, listen, I, I you know, I, I will, I, um, you know, I would like you to do this. No, no, I'm doing what my friends doing. All my friends got a YouTube channel. All my friends is showing all their body parts. All my friends is doing this and they are getting millions of views. And they are looking at that as wow, this is where the, the, the ego, this is where the attention is. So that pride door is being driven. So that pride door is making these young people say, you know, mom and dad, I know um, that y'all ra- brought me into this world, but I really don't want to be nothing like you. I want to be like what I'm seeing on YouTube, even though these young people are so rebellious, going in the wrong way. These young people are neglecting their parents because it's a pride door being opened. So what the devil is doing to our youth is he's actually hitting them in the pride door early. That's why a lot of them have a lot of shame. That's why a lot of them don't like the way they look. That's why a lot of them are kind of constantly competing. That's why a lot of them go keep doing all the type of stuff to get attention. All of this is being driven by the pride door being open. All right. So now let's go to Revelations chapter three. Let me show you this, because we saw in Genesis how Jesus understands this thing so well that Jesus says, OK, I'm, I'm going to I need to come and fix this. Revelations chapter three, and I want to read uh, verse 18, because what you're going to see Jesus is going to say is that this thing is so serious that it made itself into the church. And here he's talking to the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter three. And listen to what Jesus is saying to his church. He ain't talking. To, he ain't talking to sinners right now. He is talking to his church. Listen, listen to what he's about to say in verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Now look at this, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Now watch this. And that the shame uh oh, of thy nakedness. Hmm. Isn't isn't that kind of something that we heard in Genesis chapter three? about the shame of nakedness. They were naked and they were ashamed. <laughs> now we see all the way in Revelation at the end, Revelation chapter three, that Jesus is like, listen, in the beginning, you were naked and you were ashamed. But now I'm telling you, you are naked and let me cover you. So through this whole period, this Bible has been full of people with full of shame. So now he's getting to the end and he's like, listen, those of y'all who tired of being blind, wretched and poor, come to me and buy from me so I can cover you. What is he trying to cover us through this nakedness? What is this nakedness? The nakedness is you don't have my protection because you are prideful. <laughs> and you out here doing your own thing. You are out here uncovered because remember, I resist the proud. So the person that God is closest to is the one who had the humility heart, the humble heart. So I said last week, the one who if you want to see Satan, look at the pride tree. If you want to see God, look at the humility tree. Every time you see the pride tree, Satan is somewhere involved. So I always give I always say every week, the next argument you have, whether you're a couple, if you guys have an argument, just ask each other who which where's pride at? Pride is somewhere. One of us got it. Who, who go confess? <laughs> and the humble would say, you know what? You know what? This ain't worth it. Let's let's just. I'm, let, I want to let's be at peace. We're not going to 
let this pride thing get involved, get in the way. So here in, in episode number four, what I want to bring out with shame is that shame is something that God is trying to. He's trying to heal us from. And we see it and we see it clearly in Revelation chapter four. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter three, how he is saying, listen, please come and buy from me because I already know that you're naked. You are already naked. And he's talking to believers here. And that's the scary part. So you have a lot of believers based on what Jesus said that is naked, blind, miserable and wretched. And the scary thing is they don't know it. That is the scary part. I want to know it. It's funny because, you know, Adam and Eve, the scripture says, and they knew they were naked. This group don't know it. And this is the age we're living in. We're the latest they don't see in church. And you got a lot of blind, broken, poverty and naked folks going, I love you, Lord. And I live. And he is like, um, can you cover that nakedness Why you, before you lift up your hands to me? Yeah. And this is where we have to get back to. So if you are watching today and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I'm going to encourage you that. Jesus Christ loves you so much. If you don't know him, you are making a bad decision with your soul. Jesus Christ is soon to come back. And I just want to encourage you. I just want to really encourage you that to make sure you that you do not allow your soul to be lost because of a decision. You don't want to be that prideful that you say, I don't need him. I don't. I, listen, you tried everything. You're not going to be able to make it apart from Jesus. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm just going to ask you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you right now that you would help me to become everything you called me to be. I repent of my sins. I ask you today, Lord, that you will come into my heart, that you will remove all of the iniquities from my soul. I confess my sins before you. I acknowledge that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I acknowledge that you are the way, the truth, and the light, and no man can come to the Father but by you. Again, Lord, save me from all my sins. In Jesus' name. Listen, if that is you, welcome to the Jesus team. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. We are rejoicing here at View Station. We are super, super excited for you at this time. So listen, at this moment, we are going to get ready to go into worship and we thank you so much for joining us on another powerful teaching here at fuel station live we love you so much in jesus name god bless you let's give god a hand praise and people here. used to come to me what about her what about her I, I went i went to the lord i said lord i'm gonna be i'm just gonna be transparent charlotte i was so transparent with the lord i said lord i'm gonna be honest i don't know how to pick them i, I that's exactly what i said to my prayer i, I picked the crazy ones <laughs> I did I, because I don't want because because that pride, <laughs> pride, pride will make you pick from the pride tree and from the, uh, and the people at the pride tree is narcissistic. They're self-centered. They the, the people at the pride tree is in Second Timothy three. And so we go all and we get attracted to all these characteristics in Second Timothy, chapter three. Then we take this person and then we bring them before the altar and say, God, this is the person I'm marrying. And God is looking at us like, you know that I'm not near this pride tree. But Lord, but they look good. They look good. Lord, look. But he is six feet five, Lord. He's a six foot five double. <laughs> so, but, so that's why we keep getting duped because we have not humbled ourselves and said, you know what, Lord? So I was humble. I said, Lord, I don't know. Every time I lean to my own understanding, I always pick somebody that just something was missing two screws or maybe three.